Chapel a welcoming church. Follow us on HopeChapelAMEZion.org, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto all of us, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, beloved, and happy Mother's Day. Technical difficulty started a little late and a little frustrated, <laughs> but it's a good day in the Lord. You know, uh, I don't promise that I'm that technical. Um, technology is my forte, but I don't know if you're learning with me or you're just scratching your head, but I thank God for another day, another day that we have never seen, a day that we celebrate motherhood and womanhood. I just thank him and I thank him for all fathers. I thank him for all brothers and sisters and I thank him most for his son who came for us. Hi, I'm Pastor Ball of Hope Chapel Amy Zion Church in Utica, New York. We're the oldest black church in the Mohawk Valley and we are a welcoming church and we welcome you this morning. Well, it's Mother's Day. And a um, couple things. This has been a difficult year. And some people this year have lost their mothers. And our hearts go out to you. And if, and if you lost your mother this year, last year, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, I know you're missing her on today. But God said that I will be your mother or, and your father. And he is faithful to his word. I just pray that this message that Hope Chapel brings each week is an encouragement to you in times like these. The scripture this morning comes from 119th chapter of Psalms, the 104th through the 105th verse. And you read these words. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And for a title this morning, a Mother Day message for times like these. Let us pray. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just ask now that you would just come into our spaces, whether we are in the house or in the car, shopping, regardless of where we are. Come into our spaces, dear Father God. Dwell with us and be with us. And open up our ears so we can hear the word of God. Then I ask, Lord, that you would open up my mouth so I may speak the word of God. But the most important thing we ask as a community in Christ, take out this hardened heart, this stony heart, put in a fleshy heart, that we may do the word of God. We ask this all in the precious name of Jesus, who is our Christ, amen. A mother day for times like these. Well, when I was growing up 62 year, uh, 61 years ago, um, being a good mom meant that you got up, you cooked dinner, you, 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 you cooked breakfast, you cooked lunch, you cooked dinner, you kept an organized house. And for most minority women, that meant you worked a 40 hour job and you kept, the, and you kept some semblance of joy and happiness. That was the requirement for most good mothers. That requirement is sounds simple enough, but it is very hard because you're dealing with human beings. And so our houses didn't always resemble Mrs. Cleaver on Leave it to Beaver. Sometimes our houses were in disarray and affected by a myriad of things, including divorce and separation and hardship. But mothers of my age, a lot of them made it through by reading the scriptures, 
going to church and holding on to Jesus. Now I know many of you out there live in the 21st century. In fact, all of us do. And you're thinking, what has that ancient text gonna tell me how to deal with today? The struggles that I deal with, the hardship that I deal with is so prevalent on my job, in my house, in my community. I can go just to the grocery store like Sandra Bland, getting in her car, failed to give a signal. The police pulls her over and she's dead. There's just so much that women have to deal with today. And if you're a young woman, especially someone who hasn't been to church in a while, you're probably thinking, the word of God has nothing to tell me about how I live today. We're talking over 2,000 years ago. But I beg to differ with you. This 21st century that we live in and this ancient text speaks boldly about what you have to deal with today. And even in this fast-paced, attention-deficit world, the biblical text has something to tell you about your life as a woman. The biblical word is still a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Many of us are in patterns that, they, that you no longer feel safety, security, or the blessings of God. But that's not new either. Women on the Bible often experience danger, like Miriam, the sister of Moses, or loss of relationship, like Ruth of Moab. Both her mother, both her father-in-law and her husband died. And she, who was not Jewish, had to return to a strange land and carve out a pathway of security for her and her mother-in-law. Some of us have damaged reputations, especially in the age of Facebook. Rahab who was called a harlot, lived in Jericho, and yet she hid two spies. So Israel can go into the promised land. These women prevailed in spite of the circumstances that they were living in and experienced. And on top of that, they contributed to the church and, and, and the future of their communities. As women, we carry and we are channels of life and not death. The Bible shows us to build and encourage and to love, to nurture. The Bible tells us to forgive and to serve, not for title, not for money, not for form or for fashion. Women are defined by their relationship with Jesus. That's really important on today. And I wanna say it again. We are defined by our relationship with Jesus, not by what the world has boxed us into or told us who we should be. We are defined by our relationship with Jesus and I wish all of humanity would listen to that. We're worried about all those letters, L, G, B, Q, and all that other stuff, instead of worrying if a person can be defined by their relationship with Jesus. Regardless of how people present themselves to be, being Christian overrides all of this. It is no Greek or Jew, no male, no female, only one in Christ. And especially women 
who are underpaid and who are victimized. You are defined not by your poverty, not by your husband's last name, not by your job, not by your children. You are defined by your relationship with Jesus. This is really important on today. The same God that created heaven and earth cares for us. And so, I want to talk about three Marys on today. The first Mary I want to talk about is the Mary who had a sister named Martha and a brother named Lazarus. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and her sister was disturbed that she was not doing the traditional role of a woman. Her sister was so disturbed that Martha went to Jesus and says, hey, I'm slaving away in this kitchen and my sister is sitting here at your feet. Would you please tell her to get up and help me with the work? And this is how awesome Jesus is. Jesus does not tear down Martha, nor does he tear down uh, Mary. But he does let Martha know Mary has chosen the good part, the part that can't be taken from her. She has chosen to, to be a disciple. She has chosen to learn of me. Not that what Martha was doing was anything wrong. In fact, Jesus came to her house because he could get rest, him and his entourage. They could get fed and they could have time for private discourse. But Mary understood that that private discourse would save, deliver, and set her free. That food could wait. Because she chose an untraditional path, because women at that time wasn't supposed to be educated, and if they were to be educated, it was by their husband. Mary said, no, I will be judged by my relationship with Jesus. And so now you have this woman who sits at the feet of Jesus, starts to observe his teaching, absorb his, his, his spirit. She is there allowing that the spirit of God is poured into her and it becomes a part of her life. But there's a lesson here. Sometimes the busy, biggest obstacle that is keeping you from a, a greater relationship with the Lord may be people in your own family, people who you dearly love. Sometimes in order to get, obstacle, to get obstacles out of your way, you have to ignore tradition. You have to forget that some people are more concerned about what you do than who you are. Well, Mary, after receiving this teaching from Jesus, she becomes grateful. She becomes a worshiper. In fact, Mary is the paradigm for worship. She takes an alabaster box, breaks open the aroma, breaks open the oil onto Jesus' feet. And then with her hair and her hands, she begins to rub and administer. She begins to worship him. Again, Mary is out of tradition. Here she is. First of all, she has no business being at the man's feet. She has no business loosening her hair. She has no business touching a man that's not her husband in public. But Mary doesn't care about all that because her relationship with Jesus calls for a radical response to who he is. His relationship with her causes her to worship her in ways that 
that takes everything. It's all of who she, she is, all of what she has. She brings it to the feet of Jesus. That perfume was worth a year's wages. She brings it to the feet of Jesus. She becomes a spectacle within herself because she gets out of the, the, the pews and she falls on her face and she begins to radically cry out. She begins to worship him in, in spirit and in truth. And other people cannot appreciate her praise. They can't appreciate her worship because she is completely giving herself over to Jesus. She is the paradigm on how you worship Jesus. Forget about what anybody else does. How the, has he affected your life? How has he touched you? I want to worship Jesus with worship Jesus with all that I am and all that I have. Lord, it belongs unto you. And so Mary, even in the 21st century, you got to realize that following Jesus will take you out of tradition. Jesus may call you to do some things that other women don't do. You may not be a traditional mom. You may not have a traditional job. And you may not worship in the traditional way, but that's all right, honey. If God called you to it, then you do what God has called you to do. Because you base who you are on your relationship with Jesus. Let him continue to be a light upon your path. And so, as we understand that in a 21st century world, that you can't put me in a box. You can't tell me what I should be doing. No, I can't be out of order because I'm following Jesus. See, that's the key to all of this. I discipline my flesh to be in line with the teaching of Jesus. Even though I may be doing something radical and new, it's still done in decency and order. Why? Because it's done in relationship with Jesus. So when you're truly accepted by Christ, you can be your authentic self. Not what others expect out of us, but who God has called you to be. Now, I'm concerned about how we as women can do so much for so many. Raise our children, work full-time jobs, keep home, sing in the choir, usher at the door. Be on a number of boards in the community and activities, and yet still feel broken, used, abused. And many of us are nothing more than ticking time bombs, waiting for someone or a situation to cross over, uh, push us over the edge. And then, oh my Lord, because nobody can lay it down like a sister whose last straw has been broken. Being active is not the same as being your authentic self. Being busy is not the same as being saved, delivered, and set free. Fear of rejection stops us from really embracing the freedom and full acceptance of Jesus. Which comes to our next Mary, Mary Magdalene. Jesus cast out seven demons. Now, we don't know what these demons are. And we really don't know where, what, what kind of, of life Mary lived. The, the, the biblical text does not tell us that. Some suggested that she may be a prostitute. But, but her name, Mary Magdalene, is really, Magdalene comes from the area she's from. That's not her last name. So all we know that is, and Magdalene was a wealthy community. And we know Mary Magdalene had money because she was a supporter of Jesus, both financially and with her substance. And so we don't know 
what issues and problems she is, but what we do know, whatever trauma she had in her life and wherever it came from, it, 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 it completely engulfed her until she met Jesus. Until she met Jesus. By Jesus freeing her from her trauma, and let me be clear with this, being saved, delivered, and set free means you have to face your pain, understand your pain, and then let go of your pain. Your intersection with Jesus will help you to do just that. I don't care how highly functioning you are. All of us have trauma if we've been living on planet Earth by what we've been exposed to and what has been done to us. Jesus offers freedom of his love and acceptance. And please understand, Mary Magdalene was ready to take the shackles off. She wanted to move past her pain and be transformed, renewed, and accepted as a child of God by her relationship with Jesus. After Jesus cast out the seven demons that was with her, she began to witness to other women who had means. And they helped and supported and served and cared for the material needs of Jesus and his entourage. They became disciples. These women were there and stood there. In fact, Mary Magdalene, relationship with Jesus was such that when the disciples ran and hid, she stood there at the foot of the cross. And with boldness, while her Savior was bleeding and dying, she remained faithful. She witnessed his burial, and she would not leave until they sealed the tomb. Then, early on Easter morning, it was Mary Magdalene came with the spices and, and ready to embalm him. And although she was looking for death and receive life, she still remained faithful to following Jesus. She had to examine what she was thinking. And when Jesus called her by name, Mary, he began, it was like the same thing that happened to Lazarus happened to Mary. Her eyes was open. She took the grave clothes off her eyes. She saw the risen Savior for who he was. And Jesus told her, now you go evangelize to the men that's hiding up there and tell them what you saw. This self-examination is a practice that facilitates spiritual awakening. And it's something that we all must do. We all must re-examine. Do we hear the call of Jesus to understand him, even though we've been following him, to understand what he's actually saying to us? This re-examining what we came to do may not be who we are when we leave. Mary did not understand, but one thing she did do, she remained faithful to following Jesus. The old folks used to say, I'll understand it by and by. You keep following Jesus, you'll be able to understand it, not just when you cross over, but right here and right now. You'll be able to understand what's happening in your life, understand what's happening in the world, if you continue to follow the way of Jesus. God's constant loving presence in our life, it fosters a celebration of our created self. And it offers a safe place for us to see and name 
what is and what is not of God. And it also opens up to deeper levels of spiritual, spiritual transformation. We can all overcome what seems to be lost in the presence of God. God provides courage and strength for all who are timid and afraid. Every time we accept the word of God as reality in our lives, it transforms and lifts us anew. We can see rivers in the desert and we become co-creators to what is good. Even with darkness, we can see the separation that God is doing from dark to light. And so, I hope this Mary gives you the courage to understand that being faithful is important. Even when we don't know what the end will be, we continue to trust God to turn that situation around so we can still prevail. Well, that brings us to my last Mary. I can't talk about Mary's on Mother's Day without mentioning Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, when she was a young girl, her relationship with Elizabeth reminds every generation that God not only gives life, but he restores life. And that's to old or young. Our circumstances will not have the last word even when all signs of life have been taken away. God says that we can have a vision greater than what the situation will seem. Even barren places can have life. And even when following God means your situation gets worse before it gets better, oh yes. Following Jesus can be like that sometime. A young girl, pregnant, and not by her betrothed, she faced hardship. But yet, she trusted the word of God. And so, she had to, to move into an existence and I, and I want to tell you something about Mary that really is awesome. When, when the angel of the Lord told her that she was going to be pregnant and told her how she was going to be pregnant, she says, let it be done unto me at your word. If we can remember just that much of Mary's life, we'd be all the better. Lord, you said that you'll make a way out of no way. Lord, you said that, 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 that you can transform this situation. Lord, your word says that if I trust you, that everything will be all right. And so if we would just be like Mary, even when things get worse before they get better, and just say, Lord, whatever your word says, that's what I'm going to believe. This is important because at many times we assume that God's blessing has passed you by. We don't really want to believe that an ordinary girl like Mary who had no special skills, no special family, no special lineages, no connection could be the mother of Jesus. You know why we don't want to really accept that? Because in our ordinariness, God can do great things with us. And we would have to own up to the fact that the only reason great things have not been done on us is because we haven't been trusting God. And so, we have to learn to be the Lord's servant. 
When it's all said and done, that's what Mary said. I will be your servant. My allegiance will be to God to do, and I will continue to live my life in a way that is pleasing to my Lord. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was his first disciple. Her walk with Jesus was not an easy one. It was a hard one. She had to go through much being his mom. And in the end, she had to watch him suffer and die. Our trials and tribulations and hurts and pains are real. But yet Jesus always provided. Even to his mom, when he was laying, when he was nailed to the cross, suffering and dying, he looked at his mother and said, Mother, behold thy son. He looked at the disciple and said, uh, the, uh, um, Son, behold thy mother. He still, there is goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God knows what we need and when we need it. And like the old folks used to say, he may not come on time. He may, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. We've got to learn to be patiently and wait on the Lord, even in our pain and frustration and hardship. All of that invites growth in ways that we're not even sure we want to grow to. This is what we need in the 21st century. We need to understand that there is still a God that sits high and looks low. There's a God that is on our side, regardless of what the circumstances are. And so, yes, we have to say in the 21st century that I need a light upon, upon my path. Have you ever been in a dark room and just lit a candle and all you can see is the steps in front of you and how that light illuminates against the darkness? That's what I'm talking about on today. I don't care what kind of darkness you face in your family and in your situation. Sometimes you can't see the whole way. You can only see steps in front of you, but God will be that light to your path on today. And then sometimes God is like the sun. He floods everything. The closer you align yourself to, to the Lord, not only will he give you visions to walk one step in front of the other, he will let you see more so you can understand the vision for tomorrow. And then sometimes when the load gets heavy and weary, you don't need sunlight. You don't need candlelight. You need starlight. He maketh me to lie down by still waters light. Sometimes you need the rest and the peace that surpasses all understanding in your life. And the discernment to understand what type of light you need in your life. Jesus is the light. He is the light of the world. And he'll give you the type of light when you need the light, how you need the light. Remember, beloved, you will gain understanding from his precepts and you'll begin to hate every false way. His word is a lamp unto your feet on today and a light unto your path. That's the kind of God we serve. When everywhere people are, are revisioning history and remaking and out loud lying, you need the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the light. That's what you need to be a 21st century mom on today. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. But remember, in this life, you're going to need some real light to guide your path. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about and the world seems really dark and heavy around you, it's all right, baby. I got a light for you. All you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. That's the kind of, that's the first light that you want to receive. 
then you want to get with a Bible-believing church. If you live in Utica, Hope Chapel, we welcome you. Go to hopechapelamyzion.org and fill out the, the, send us your, your information and somebody will get back with you and pray with you. But in the meantime, wherever you are, join with other believers. Jesus is the light, the light of the world. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I hope you enjoyed today's message. I more, more than enjoy it. I hope that it's a message that will do you some good. On this Mother's Day, if you haven't spoken to your mother yet, reach out to her and tell her Happy Mother's Day. And then there's some of us. There are people who have been mothers in our lives, like Jesus' mother at the cross and the disciple. There are people who are not your biological mothers, but who were a mother to you. Tell them Happy Mother's Day too. The benediction. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to stand before his presence in his glory, blameless with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you.